another little video just to highlight what I mentioned about appeals before. Um, about appeals are basically a, a review of the judicial process and the rules of court and the procedures that are followed to make sure that everything is in, in order. So here's a little uh, interview that I, uh, I found very interesting. It is a while ago, end of May, this was published, it says here, but um, it just highlights what Chris Gard is going to explain. I'll let you watch the video, it's self-explanatory. Switched on. One of the hardest things for me was when we actually got the appeal papers. It says Connie Yates and Chris Gard versus Great Ormond Street Hospital and Charlie Gard. And that broke my heart because they've, we're not his mum and dad anymore. They've got parental responsibility. And how is that right? Basically, it seems as if you take your child into hospital, you no longer have any responsibility for them. They take over. He was born last August, apparently healthy. But Charlie has an extremely rare genetic condition. So that's basically um, a good example of... A lot of the points I've made in all of my videos is that when you're being pulled into someone's court, I in this case Great Ormond Street Court, that your 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 role and your um, status is being defined by that court and the rules of that court. Okay, so this is why I'm pleased. I haven't seen uh, Chris Gard speak much actually in all of the the uh, apart from last uh, yesterday when he gave his speech out of court at the end of court um, about about having enough of this legal battle and almost giving up. But uh, when I, I actually found this interview later yesterday in the evening and I was like, oh, right, OK, so Chris, Chris Gard obviously is expressing an interest in, in the system and he's seen, obviously he, he's experienced it, but his brain is starting hopefully to click and to work out how this game works. And the game works that you're essentially being represent if you're not represented which everyone everyone runs to get representation because you do you know they all they do ask you to seek independent legal advice should you be drawn into a legal arena and they do that so that you can then participate in the legal court but by doing so you very much surrender your sovereignty is one way of I've heard it being put by a by a judge. You surrender your sovereignty in certain respects when you do that, and therefore you become part of that system, part of the rules of that particular court. And I think Chris put it down very, very well, just there in relation to what actually is, what he feels is going on, and how he explains what's going on. Yet he obviously still has no idea why that's happening and how, obviously, to defeat the system that he's being put into. Let's just carry on with that interview. Next statement from Chris Gard. They say it's in his best interest to switch to palliative care and let him die naturally. But his parents have found a doctor in America that's willing to try an experimental treatment on their son. If he didn't need a piece of apparatus that was helping him breathe, I could go back to that hospital, pick my son up and take him out of that hospital. Right, just pause it there. So we're going to look at that. Now, do you remember the case... <clears throat> Aisha King, just going to look here, manhunt. Okay, if you if you did go in there and say, that's my baby, I'm taking him out of here. On the 28th of August, 2014, an international manhunt for King and his parents commenced. Remember this? Parents, those pertaining to equal rights. So once you've accepted the title of parent, and you go in there and you think that you can just pick up your bundle of joy and walk out of the hospital... The hospital has an equal say in that matter, or at least the state. Let's just call it the state, not the hospital. The state has has a um, you know equal interest as you as do you in this little bundle of joy. So do you remember they these people were uh, they took their kid out? I think they took it out. This is just from memory now. I mean it's on the screen. Read it if you like. But they took it out and they wanted to take it. I think to Switzerland for some sort of radiotherapy that was quite um, not available in the UK. It's quite groundbreaking radiotherapy. But there was an international arrest warrant. I do remember that being put out for these people, uh, and they wanted them extradited to back to the UK. I think eventually they backed off on that because it was just creating a massive hoo ha in the media. Um, around not only UK but Europe and obviously the world in general uh, and it wasn't doing him any favours. So in terms of what Chris believes that he could just go in there and take him out, yeah he could do that. I'm sure the hospital would uh, would, would stop him or at least uh, be abrupt to him but as soon as he did take that um, baby out of, out of hospital 
there would be an arrest warrant out for them immediately and the baby will be returned to uh, to the care of the hospital. Let's crack back on with the interview. Oops, not that one. But because he's got something blowing air into his lungs, we, we, don't, we don't have a chance. He, he's theirs and they get to say what happens to him. Even though there is another expert in the world that is willing to take him and willing to treat him, they've got to say they've got so much power. It's unbelievable. You know, he's Charlie Guard. He's he's our son, um, and we've got no power over him. And I think people need to know that that you've got to be aware that if you take your child into the hospital, you, you they're not yours anymore. Yes and no, they are yours. Okay, but the hospital will presume that you're giving custody over to the hospital. And this is what's happened with Charlie Gard. So he's, been, he's had his custody surrendered over to the hospital for care. And unfortunately, he's obviously on life support, so it does make taking that out. But taking the baby out of hospital tricky, as, Garley, as Charlie's just said, uh, Chris has just said, sorry. Um, now, this is where it's important that you make the status of your baby known to the hospital. When you take, when you bring your hosp when you bring your baby into the hospital, it's good to serve them some notices. Okay, so if you've got a sick baby, I would at least at least serve them notice that you are mother and father and wish to be um, addressed as such. And as mother and father, you know, give them your name. So Chris Chris Garden Corny Yates, and then I'll give a second notice, just very simply outlining. Although you have care and custody of my of of Charlie Guard at all time he is to be known to you as a, my prop as as our property and at any time should we wish to, and and in and in um, determining what you're going to do with him, you know basically he's your property just just leave it as that because there's no there's no uh, there's no atta um, terms and conditions or attachments or conditions with property you know at all time he's my property now the only thing when you do this is the hospital might say whoa why are you bringing it here then we can't have we can't deal with that or there may be a much more basic requirement of the hospital because again I'm not a hospital staff I don't know what their code books say I don't know what their what their um what their um me uh, their remit is their memorandum whatever their articles are that, that that define their rules I'm sure they're publicly available but I haven't had any requirement thankfully not to, to, to go delve deep into these things but the hospital will have some sort of um rule about accepting parents and children and also in relation to accepting people who bring their property in. So if the hospital are say, oh, we can't accept property, and therefore they're going to refuse it flat out for treatment, who knows? But at the very least, now that he is in the care, the the the, uh, the uh, notice given to the to the, the head office and every as I mentioned in my previous video, just give notice mm -hmm. out that Charlie Guard is property, and you wish to exercise your rights over your property, and if anyone at Great Ormond Street believes they have a they have a higher claim to uh, Charlie Guard, uh, then by all means their claim can come forward and you can have that claim out in court. Um, and that's and that's the, basically the gist of it is the definition of what's going on, the facts around the custody that will make Charlie uh, Chris Guard, who's his dad, feel like he's powerless and you're surrendering. The, at no point are you surrendering over uh, your baby, your property, unless you uh, they presume that they may presume that they're doing that. And they may even assume that you're doing that. But the moment you inform them to the contrary or to the otherwise, then uh, they're not going to uh, have uh, property rights respected. And that's basically the, the frustration. And in the meantime, you're being dragged down their legal system because, you know, they need a result. They need a, they need a certain outcome of this. And they're going to push you down that route anyway. So that's just basically the frustration that I see here and just my two cents on what actually is going on. So lastly, uh, these are these are the sentiments which reflect the the wishes that were um, explained yesterday and today in the newspaper being a Tuesday, I think the twenty eighth, if my memory serves right, of July. Uh, the parents are now having to go back into court, even though they gave that statement yesterday outside of court that they wish to withdraw their legal battle. They still are involved in this legal case, whether they like it or not, and their wishes were to have the baby come home, to give it a bath to lay the baby down in the cot that he never got to sleep in, and then obviously let nature take its course. Um, but they're their wishes, and their wishes are at 
the um, discretion of the court, which is the Great Ormond Street Court. So if it's not in Great Ormond Street's um, interests to do that because of logistics costs and manpower and, and all these other factors, uh, then it's unlikely that they're going to... I mean, why would they grant the wishes? But we'll see. Now in the hands of the courts. Please not go in there. He spent far too long there and I will not let my son die in that building. That's my well to be taken away in a heartbeat. You know, so I'm not, I'm not prepared for that. Not when there's something out there that can help him. He's still there, he's still fighting. And while he's still fighting, we're still fighting. We've always said that. We've all tried to do our bit.